Well, and probably the most important thing to know about CA is, is that it's a retrovirus. You know that, you know everything about it. Um, so if you know it's a retrovirus, then you know it's persistent infection, you know vaccines, species specific, stuff like that. So that is CAE in a nutshell. Um, retrovirus, lentivirus, and there are not many of them. I'll show you a list of them later on. And it's more common, it's most, it's more common in dairy goats than in meat goats. So dairy goats is what I'm straight, we're stretching here. So what are the clinical signs? Let's go to that. We talk about clinical signs different in mature goats versus kids, right? And we come to that a bit later. And this is one thing you need to know, especially if you import animals. Most infected animals will be asymptomatic. In a herd, if a herd has it, up to 90% of the animals might have no symptoms at all. You might never see it, especially if animals go to slaughter when they're like a year old. They won't live it long enough for you to see any symptoms, and that you have to bear this in mind. But if they live long enough, CAE will decrease the life, lifelong productivity of dairy goats because of the symptoms which we'll talk about in a minute. So how do animals get it? Colostrum, right? Early infection of kids is what is the predominant way that animals get it. 99% is this thought of animals that get it. It's not the only way, but it is thought to be the predominant way. You get it via colostrum and or milk. Hence, you can see the link with dairy, because in dairy animals, you might be doing pool colostrum. You might be giving them milk that you have stored or something. Anim milk from one animal might be given to many other animals. That doesn't happen usually in a meat herd of goats, but it might happen in a dairy goats, right? And it takes months or years for the disease to develop. And I said only 20% or less of animals would show clinical signs. I've seen animals with CAE, but that was an infected herd, um, a special infected herd, which I was working on years ago. So the symptoms in adult goats, sudden or progressive lameness. So it's uh, arthritis, synovitis in older animals. Another name, you have heard the word big knee? Another name for it is big knee because the animals would have uh, enlarged carpal joints or other joints too, but a lot of body condition, the old animal, they start to lose weight. Why? Because they can't walk. They can't walk to the feed trough, they can't walk to get the water, and they start to lose body condition. Rough hair coat, which is not symptomatic of this specific, specific disease, but you will see it. Pneumonia, it causes pneumonia as well with labored breathing. Animals will pant. Hard odor, you will see that too, because the, the virus also goes to the udder. And obviously, you'll have reduction in milk production as a result. But in kids, it's a bit different. So usually in kids, two to, two to five months old, you will see encephalomyelitis in kids. And these are the symptoms that you might see. In the At post-mortem, you won't see anything, right? If you're a pathologist, and you do some pathology work, some histology and other stuff, you might see, thinking of, you might see some of these things, proliferation of synovial villi, soft tissue calcification, rupture of ligaments, inflammatory, inflammatory cells, in spinal nerve, foci in the lung, in the still pneumonia, and so on. But I've never seen many of these lesions in animals that I did post-mortem. I didn't see anything. Um, but we had to put them down because they were just losing weight and emaciation and probably we saw enlarged joints in males. Can the goat get rid of the virus? Can a man get rid of HIV? Can a cow get rid of bovine leukosis? No. Once you have it, you have it for life, unfortunately. It's a typical of retroviruses, of all retroviruses that we know, right? You got it, and you always have it. It's persistent. Where is the virus present? If you, I don't know, it's, it, if you go on the OIA website, I don't know if many countries report that they have it. These countries report that they have it. As I said, if you don't look for it, you probably won't find it. The USA, it is thought that 60% of the herds, goat herds in the USA, are infected. I don't know if it's a true statement, but that is what you see in the literature. Canada maybe less than 60%, most fewer herds are infected. New Zealand claim they have it, France has it, mainly in the dairy animals, Switzerland in dairy animals, 
And as I say, it's not just USA, but on average, they say 60% of animals are zero positive. So if you're importing animals from these countries, you have to be aware of this disease. And that's why the Caribbean is aware of the disease, because we import, right? Some Caribbean countries, such as Jamaica and Barbados, in the past um, 10, 15 years, have apparently eradicated the virus by culling entire, and the key word here is imported herds. So in, Jama in the Jamaican situation, in the 1980s, early 1980s, before I got there, imported herd came in, several hundred animals, well, not several hundred, a couple of hundred animals. And, and that was a time when their CAE was new. Very few people had ever even knew anything about CAE. But we had some people, some vets, who had seen it in the United States, American vets, and they, they diagnosed it. And, but they didn't want to slaughter the animal because they were high-valued imported dairy animals. And they were there for like, I don't know, in a quarantine herd for many, many years, maybe eight, nine years. When I came from university, I had to work with this flock, with this herd. I did some work on it in my master's, and we just couldn't get rid of it, and eventually they slaughtered the entire herd. Barbados had a similar situation, maybe in the 90s. So you, this you need to know. If you know nothing, if you, if you take away nothing from my, my, my little talk here, remember the colostrum, right? Because in infected herds in the United States and elsewhere, people have tried to snatch the kid at birth before it starts to suck the, the, um, the colostrum. Because that is a sure way, not a sure way, but one of the best ways to prevent infection. But guess what? The kids give birth at three in the morning when you're sleeping. <laughs> and they have tried that where they give the herdsman camera, video camera, <laughs> so he can play on his computer and see the same time when all the kids are giving birth, but he falls asleep, invariably. And the case of colostrum, and that's it. But there are, there are farmers who try this in the States, some with some success, some with less success. And that is the most efficient way of transmission. But having said that, there is proof that people think that this is not the only way that goats can get it, because even kids that have been snatched in, later on have become infected, rarely. So how do they become infected? Guess what? We don't know. We don't know, but it is possible um, to get an infection otherwise. But I'll show you another slide which talks about that. So, unlikely, I didn't say, note I didn't say impossible. Unlikely means of transmission are in utero. Some scientists think that it is possible. I don't know. Birth in, during birth, placental and other fluids. Saliva, I don't know. Probably. They don't think so, but transmission by respiratory secretions during mothering. AI, what is AI? It's not artificial intelligence, right? It's artificial insemination. And ET. We don't think so, but we can't say with absolute certainty that the virus, for instance, is not in semen. But it has never been really proven that it is in a great degree. In a herd, there might be horizontal transmission in milking from milking equipment, contaminated equipment, or fomites. There might be some level of. There is evidence that there is some level of transmission that way. So semen, yeah, semen can be contaminated, but it's, it is thought to be a rare event. So you should not, people don't think that AI will spread the virus, right? Because it's very rarely found in semen, like most viruses, very rarely found in semen or in, um, maybe even, even in embryo transfer. Many countries detect the virus for the first time after live goat importation, especially after live dairy goat importation. So this, is, this you should bear in mind. Live animal trade, therefore, a major risk factor, very big risk factor. And that's what the Caribbean countries are concerned about. Will I get CAE from importing animals? And it's a question that every CEO asks when farmers come to them and say, I want to import animals. First of all, where are you importing animals from? Are there free herds in that country? Are there certified free herds in that country? And can I trust the results of the lab that is doing those tests? Those questions are not easy to answer. I went to the USA last year to buy animals on the, two years ago with Cardi for a project, and those are the questions we're asking the farmers and asking the USDA, you know? And it was not easy to get 
the answer that you want. So if you want to know if you have your virus, you've got to do testing, right? And if you want to know if animal is coming in, you've got to make sure the animals are tested. But that's not good enough. You probably have to want to know that the herd is tested. You don't just pick out the ones you're going to buy and test them. It's the disease because, but remember, long incubation period, right? So you don't know how long the animal is going to take to mount an immune response. It might be within the period when you're testing, there are no, there are no antibodies, right? So this is not a very easy disease to diagnose. So you need to know the history, clinical science, and you need laboratory tests if you're going to do a diagnosis. You can't just use one. It's better to use all three. So the lab tests are the AGID, Agarital Immune Deficient Test, which many labs still use. The ELISA is also being used now, but the ELISA might not even detect low antibody titers, and the agar gel might, if you test animals when they are less than maybe six months old or even nine months old, they might not have antibodies. Or the antibodies might just be from colostrum, right? From the male. So you can't say it's an infected animal or not. Western blood PCR and virus isolation, I suppose, is what you really want to do. Differential diagnosis are there. It's not rocket science, arthritis, anything caused nervous symptoms, listeria, listeriosis rabies, if you have those in your country. Can other animals get the disease? We don't think so. Experimental infection, yes, in sheep is seen, but we're not, we don't think that other animals can get it. Neither is it thought to be a zoonosis. Can you control and eradicate it, though? Yes. The best way to control and eradicate it is stamp it out, right? Slaughter everything and start over. Well, I'm not sure you really want to do that sometimes. There are programs in the USA, New Zealand, Norway to control it. There are CAE controlled programs run by the USDA. Not many farmers have signed up to it because farmers complain about the cost of doing that, you know, and it's not an easy thing. And as I said, Caribbean countries have already dealt with it. So we'll talk about the snatching. Or if you can't snatch, you can try to feed colostrum that has been heated at 45 degrees for 60 minutes. That again, you know, in, in the herd we had in Jamaica, the thermometer broke one night, and the morning the guy used his finger in the milk <laughs> to test the temperature. I thought, this is 64, this is 65. You know, come on, it's not going to work, right? So it was a failure. It didn't work very well. So give the guy two thermometers, please, if they're going to do this, try to feed heated colostrum from infected animals, or you just use pasteurized milk. Other recommended measures, semi-annual testing of herds, isolate and segregate positive versus negative. It must be at least six feet apart because they did some trials where they had positive animals on one side, negative on the other, just a, just a fence where they could kiss each other or nuzzle the nose and after a couple of years, the negative animals became infected. So it is likely that the virus could be in salivary, um, not salivary, nasal discharge if there are white blood cells and stuff like that in the, in the discharge, right? So, and culling is what I have there, positive animals, with some, some of the programs will have that. There are vaccines. So is there vaccines for HIV? No, the same complication. Right? Same problem with all the retroviruses. No vaccines yet. They're working on them, but the, vaccine, the, the virus are smarter than we are. Can human get the disease? No. The retrovirus has never been found in people. So it's not, it's not a zoonosis. Just like the other, the other um, retroviruses, they are species specific. CAE in goats is thought to be almost the same thing as my division in sheep. You know? um, bovine leukosis, not a retrovirus, same, same issues. Even leukosis. Um, EIA in horses and HIV. 